Hello YouTube! Welcome to the first episode of my Digital Aquarium Controller Series, Introduction and Design. This is the first episode of several, so let me start by explaining what I'll be doing here and why. The controller I'm building, like several found on the market, is a small computer that controls many of the devices used to keep and maintain a healthy reef aquarium. This design has gone through several modifications. The system is already about 70% complete. These first few videos will be playing catch up. Sorry guys, I started without you. But no worries, later I'll do better to film the steps as they're in progress. But in all seriousness, I'm posting these videos to attempt to give back to some of the wonderful community of tinkerers and do-it-yourselfers out there. Hopefully some of you can gain some knowledge and insight from this work. I've been an aquarium enthusiast for decades. I love the hobby and I've kept many sizes and types of aquariums. Far too many according to my wife. You should know, saltwater and electronics get along poorly. Should you build your own, or even purchase one off the shelf, this is an important detail to remember. Moving parts fail. Any sensor or mechanical device in contact with the water will probably need frequent maintenance, so you'll forget and it will fail. When I constructed the fish room in the tank layout almost five years ago, I already had plans for the automation system. Intentions to add it later, though not quite this much later. Since then, I've determined that many components I had intended to add would likely require way more time to maintain than the value that they would add to the system. Let's look at my first starry-eyed design plan. Here's my original component layout. I do a lot of pre-planning, which is great because then after putting down a project for a few years, you might be able to figure out what type of crazy idea you were working on. I figured that I needed more control pins than the basic Adreno had, so this was engineered around the Adreno Mega with its 53 digital control pins. Connected to that would be a real-time clock, input keyboard, display, a float switch for each tank and sump, and a relay board containing 12-volt solenoid valves for both water level top-off and drains. This is one of the first ideas that got scrapped, automatic water changes. It sounded great, it really did. Either from the push of a button or at some set time, a valve would open, drain the tank down to a set level. I have these tanks plumbed into the drain lines to allow this. Then it would close that valve, and the next valve would open to fill it back up. However, the problem with this is that you miss out on a really important time of vacuuming and cleaning the tank, and you exchange it for an automated system that when it fails may very well kill everything, including your equipment. I decided that I really want to be present for water changes, and if I'm there, I can open the valves manually. Next we have the Ethernet hat with SD card. I want logging and an internet interface. Back in the day, this is how that was done best. The rumor model has Cat5 port connecting from my router to the wall where the electronics should be housed. Since then, however, Raspberry Pi has become a thing. A much, much better thing. Needing fewer pins and resources from the Adreno and capable of way more. So this component's been scrapped and replaced with a G-code style serial communication with a Raspberry Pi. Another relay board to control the standard AC lights and a CO2 control solenoid. The CO2 dosing is still present, but after years of problem-free use without any controller, I no longer see the need for a controller. So that portion's been scrapped. Relays to control cooling fans in the standing canopy and for the 12 volt LED light fixtures. Another to control outlets for power heads to use as wave makers. These have been updated to SSD relays as I suspected the mechanical ones would wear quickly and the clicking could get really annoying. And yet another relay board to control outlets for pumps and heaters. I didn't go over it, but above there was a sixth relay board for, board for four more optional outlets. 24 relays in the original plan. Then we have a number of temperature sensors, in tank and out. Most of these remain. pH probes for each tank. These were scrapped. After five years, I don't worry about pH anymore. And the probes are expensive. They require frequent maintenance and calibration. Finally, a custom moonlight I built. It looks like an actual moon with phase changes and everything. Not practical, but really neat. Okay, having gone on over the old plan, you should have an idea of the current design. It's very similar. I'll go over details as we work through various components, builds, and future videos. To finish up here though, I'd like to list out some general goals for this device. So, what do we want to do, and how can we do it? First, a few essentials. We want everything capable of easy removal and replacement. None of these sensors or boards should be soldered in. This does require a crap load of connectors, but the expense is worth it. In the spirit of repair and replacement, I need to choose some components that I might be able to find again in the future if it craps out. Use standard connectors and whatnot. Adreno Mega and Raspberry Pi should be around for a while. The relay modules are very common. PC power supplies aren't going away anytime soon, etc. 
A manual override or failsafe is needed for any function that runs a risk of harming my beloved aquarium inhabitants, or that would need to continue running if the control system fails. For example, the heaters have their own thermostat. They suck, but they're there. So, if I set that to slightly above the desired temp, then even if the controller fails and leaves them on constantly, it won't cook my fish. Finally, and quickly here, I promise, some design goals. Timekeeping. We need to track the time, keep it accurate, and use it for everything. Lights. On, off, fade up, dim down, control every aspect of the lighting. Everything should be adjustable and tunable. Temperature. Track and log the temperature everywhere. Use that data to turn on and off heaters and fans. Top off. Monitor the water levels. Top off as needed and log the amount of water added. Take precautions not to add too much. Wave makers. Two banks of outlets turning on and off at specified intervals. And the moon phase. Turn on the moonlight each night and set it to the correct phase of the moon. Display. Update the LCD display panel with relevant information. Keypad. Allow some user control from a keyboard on the front panel. And lastly, the Raspberry Pi. The Adreno should send logging to the Raspberry Pi for storage. It'll retrieve configuration settings from the Pi, and the Pi will host a web interface to allow more granular control and data analysis. If you stuck with me this far, thank you. From here on out, we get into the gritty, hands-on portions of the build. Please make sure and subscribe if you want to see those videos as they're added. And please click like if you do like the series idea and you want me to continue with it. And lastly, please comment with suggestions. What parts would you like to see next? There's a lot to cover, so what are you most interested in? Have a great day, YouTube. Till next time.